the city of Tacoma's historic preservation office, in association with Pretty Gritty Tours, presents Tacoma Noir. Larry Hendelson looked up at Ray Rook. The 38 revolver still in his hand, his eyes narrowed. A half dozen officers swiveled their barrels towards the Pinkerton. What the hell is this, Rook? Here's your man, Charles. Ray, what are you doing? Pinkerton agent Larry Hendelson. Here's the man you want. He murdered Sam Glenn. Like hell he did. Start talking, Ray. Took me a minute to figure it out. Vincent here was pulling the strings on Joseph Walter getting him to take the blackmail photos of people in town to lean on him. He had everyone in his pocket, just like the priest. When the action got too tense for the priest, he came to me, hoping I would go after Joseph as the killer and he would be rid of his blackmailer. Except Vincent tailed him and saw what was going on. That night in the bathhouse, Vincent here killed the priest. He must have promised Joseph a lot of money because he had him hook, line, and sinker. Joseph tried to apply the pressure on Sam Glenn too, get him to change the direction of the steam tunnels to go underneath the safe in the new Washington building. Wait, the safe? The safe was the play all along. They knew they couldn't tunnel underneath it without running into the water table and run the risk of drowning in a grave they dug themselves. They needed Sam to provide a city-authorized route under the safe. From there, Joseph would be their Peterman and blow a hole in the bottom, the same way he learned from Ray Gamble. I wouldn't be surprised if the string of safe robberies in the area have some connection to him as well. He had the liquid nitrogen, the explosives, and the knowledge. What he didn't have was a way to move that tunnel. Joseph and Vincent needed Sam alive. Once I knew that, I knew they didn't kill him. Besides, Vincent here was in the cooler the night of the murder. As were you, Steele. Is that true? It is. I was pressing this scumbag for information the night of the murder. We didn't get anything, though. And you and your team cut him loose in the morning. Larry didn't know that, though. And he had already made plans to go kill Vincent, didn't you? Larry Hendelson hadn't let go of his revolver. The air in the room was so tense you could have played it like a string instrument. I found his stakeout spot across the street. Shredded blue bore tobacco all over the corner. Also, only a pro tears up his cigarettes after to avoid detection. Ironically, that's the first thing that tipped me off. When Sam Glenn showed up at the job site in the middle of the night, you plugged him thinking he was Vincent. You didn't know he was in an interrogation room that night. When you found out what you did, you dragged the body up the tower and threw him over hoping he would land in the pit and look like a suicide. That's when your button came off. Ray Rook produced the worn brass button from his pocket. Bad luck that it fell into Sam's pocket on the way down. Alan, former military man, would never let his uniform look that shabby. Only a beat-down union breaker out of Montana would still have the old worn brass from Tiffany & Co. This is garbage. Why would you believe this broken-down old gumshoe? You're going to shut up for a minute. Ray... What was Sam even doing down there that night anyhow? I think you'll find your answers right there. Without taking his eyes off Larry, he nodded his head towards Mitzi. The money was just too good, wasn't it, Dull? Mitzi slowly sat up in the chair. The look of fear she let drop from her face like a cheap mask. Ray, baby, what are you saying? Joseph here may have worked for Vincent, but he was in your palm. You were the one who suggested that he blackmail Sam. Maybe get him alone in the dressing room with you and he could snap some shots once you had him pinned. That's why he still smelled of your perfume, doll. That man must have been made of some solid stuff, though, to have turned you down. I don't know that I could have done it. Is it illegal to try and have a good time with a guy? Dollface, come on! You ain't gonna sell me down the river, are you? Baby, we had a good thing! An officer cuffed Joseph across the back of his head to shut him up. Problem was, Sam Glenn may have been the last honest man in Tacoma. He wouldn't have any of it. 
no one could have predicted he'd still be faithful to his wife, especially with her cheating on him. Sally Glenn looked up like she was trying to melt into the shadows. Wide-eyed, she looked at the group. I imagine the Sandberg outfit approached Sam first. When he turned him down, Sally tried to convince him that he should do it, because the money would be good. When he refused, she found a new way in. Sally thought she could get Doyle Farrington, the architect, to move the tunnel, if she was in his bed. Of course, he could only do so much. He drafted the plans, but only Sam had the authorization to make them a reality. You'll find everything you need in the documents there, Charles. Plus, if I'm not mistaken, Oscar Richter probably has the ballistics for you, confirming that the 38 slug found inside Sam Glenn was fired from Larry Hendelson's revolver. Ray motioned to Betty. She handed the chief detective the package she had collected from the post box where Ray had stashed it the first day. Why, though? The money, Charles. The Sandberg outfit was willing to pay any one of them to get access into the largest and most secure safe in Tacoma. Only problem was, Sam Glenn wouldn't do it. It's just bad luck that Larry here mistook him for a crook and took him off the board. Larry Handelson made the slightest motion to raise his revolver when Charles Burns' large revolver leapt from his holster with startling speed and came <coughs> crashing down on the Pinkerton's face. He collapsed as the chief detective let the revolver maul its target. Get him out of here! And her and him! Charles pointed at Mitzi and Joseph. Please, I'm not a bad girl. I'm just in a bad way. You can tell your sad stories to a judge. Jesus, we don't have enough handcuffs for this city. What about this one, Ray? Charles pointed to Sally Glenn, who had retreated against the wall. Her dark eyes defiant and wild. It's not a crime to be a terrible wife and a faithless person. She tried to use us all, but she never had the conviction to get her hands dirty. She just pulled the strings of those caught in her web. Didn't even have the decency to be honest with me at the end. I guess you're free to go, miss. As the officers bundled up the occupants of the room and shuffled them off to the police station, Alan Steele came forward. Thank you, Rook. I'm embarrassed that we didn't catch this sooner and deal with it in-house. If it turns out that this is true, then you have helped preserve the reputation of the Pinkerton Agency by getting this guy before he could do more damage. If you need anything, you ask me. They shook hands. As everyone cleared out, Ray was left alone with Sally Glenn. She purred ever so slightly as she moved in close to him. Leaning in, she pressed her face against his chest. Oh, Mr. Rook, I was so frightened. You were so clever. You figured it out and you saved me. Ray Rook took out a cigarette and lit it, letting the shadows get pushed back from his face, though they never left his eyes. Get out of here, doll. Everyone ends up in lockdown tonight. Only difference is, you've made your own prison. Sally Glenn opened her mouth to speak, then pulled away from Ray Rook, letting her fingers linger on his chest for a moment. Then she slipped out the door. She left the same way she came into this life, silent and full of fury, like a velvet sledgehammer. The scent of her lingered as Ray took another drag of his cigarette. Chief Detective Charles Byrne came and stood next to Ray Rook. Hey, cheer up, Ray. At least you're not in prison tonight. Ray Rook took another drag of his cigarette. Exhaling the smoke, he pushed away the scent of Sally Glenn. All of us are serving time, Charles. Some of us are still just walking around while we do it. Ray Rook tipped his hat to the Chief Detective and went back out into the city to find a drink.